I'm Gary C. Johnson. You've seen these billboards and ads that say size matters. I agree. The size that matters is the size of the results the law firm gets for their clients. We have several multi-million dollar verdicts here in Kentucky. In fact, our firm owns the record for the single largest personal injury verdict in the state of Kentucky. That's the size that matters to you. In Kentucky, give our firm the call. Welcome to Simply the Law of Life with Gary C. Johnson and Keith Casebolt. Hello everyone, welcome in to Simply the Law of Life. I'm Keith Casebolt with Gary C. Johnson. My friend, let me ask you a question. Is it as simple as Del Carnegie says that if you want a good dog, just give it a good name? Well, that helps. <laughs> but if you give it a little few treats along, that would go along too. But Gary is, you know, we've started studying all these books and we started out with Dale Carnegie, but I think the point is the expectations. So if you give the dog the good name, the expectation is that it's going to be a good dog because it's a positive thought. Are we any different as human beings? I hope so. <laughs> no, what the, uh, what the Dale Carnegie is trying to say there is, you absolutely don't, under any circumstance, ever get anything being mean or criticizing, condemning, or complaining. You get something from someone and you get a response from them when you're nice and kind and give them some praise. So now, are, are we basically predicting the future by saying, uh, we're gonna call this dog killer or whatever we want to call it. So we're predicting the attitude of the pet just like we would do with individuals if we put a label upon them? Well, if you crawl, you kick, and you're mean to your dog, you will create a biting dog. <laughs> and if you're mean and cruel and nasty to people around you, they will respond. It's just that simple. Dale so Carnegie is trying to say, my friends, be nice. Give honest appreciation to people. Uh, think before you open this mouth. <laughs> encouragement. <laughs> encouragement, that's right. And uh, and believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself. Oh, I saw a good thing on TV the other night, a quote from a guy. He was in front of this mirror, printing up and around and stuff. And he said, <clears throat> you know, when you learn to love yourself, you've got a lifetime romance. <laughs> Well, you know, now that you're talking about it, and I'm thinking about Dale Carnegie, how many people who have made it in the world have looked back and said, I want the individual who told me 30 years ago or 40 years ago, you'll never make it, or you'll never make it in music, or you'll never make it in business. They literally had never lost what that person said to them and wanted to come back and say, look at me now. It stuck with them. Well, there was a quote in this book here that simply says that you injure me and I will heal. You insult me and I will take it to the grave. Boy, isn't that the truth? I mean, so people uh, that are wildly successful and worth millions of dollars, they're holding on to this insult that someone gave them, maybe in grade school or high school, a classmate or you know, maybe a peer or teacher, and they can't let go of it after all this time. But they should. And that's one of the things we're trying to talk to you folks about is letting go. When that thing comes in your brain, that voice, that wants to relive that insult or whatever that person said to you. Distance yourself from it. Stop listening to it. And think of something different. And after a while, it'll leave you alone. <laughs> but, but let's talk about that. It is so powerful. And when we give it credence and we pay attention to it, it embeds itself in us. So even though we're adults now, and we're older men and women, we're going back to something hurtful that somebody said when we were children. The point I'm trying to make, Keith, is you don't have to. Correct. You don't have to do that. And it's in this book, Can't Stop Thinking, that Nancy Collier 
in these other books here about the voice in your head, the inner voice, and all of those things. What these people are all saying is, I told Anita this weekend, I had all these books stacked up there trying to figure out something with them, and she looked at me a little strange. I said, look, it's one or two things, Anita. These people are on to something, or they're all crazy. <laughs> I'm hoping that they're on to something. <laughs> I'm trying to find out, but they may all be crazy. Well, you said something the other day after we did uh, the program. You said, you know, Keith, we've been on this journey and we're trying to find this information. At least we're busy trying to be happy and we're busy trying to learn so that we're not thinking about these other things. And I saw a great email from a, a lady, Tina, that had, had sent to you that said, over the years, it's been nice to consider the things that you're talking about, and, and it's helped. You know, as I was driving here today, you cannot drive or do anything and be by yourself without thoughts coming into your brain. It is impossible for you to not have those thoughts, right? Each and every one of you. One hundred percent. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. So at one point I checked myself to see what I was thinking. <laughs> you know, I just stopped. I said, "I'm okay now. What am I thinking?" And I realized that I must have come up with finally getting there because everything I was thinking was positive. Really? Yeah. I mean, I think most of us would right now say, Gary, we would give anything to be in that state of mind. That's unusual. That doesn't happen. And it was just that it was. It was positive. It was about some things I could do that would enhance this or uh, just different things that was going through my mind. And there was absolutely not a single negativity thing in it. And I was so pleased with myself that I patted myself on the back. <laughs> Now, see, here's the reverse of that. At one time, I was telling Gary, these thoughts, man, they come in, and they get a hold of me. And Gary said, well, let's do a test. You write them down, and, and write them down as they're happening, and then let's look at them. So I did, and we got back together to do the show, and Gary was like, oh, Lord, <laughs> these, these are bad. <laughs> and you know what? The startling thing was, it was one of the best lessons you taught me, is when I wrote that stuff down, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Not only was it mean-spirited, it did me no good, it was hurtful, it was bad, and I, when I saw it in writing, I thought, who in their right mind would think these things? Well, these quotes in this book here says, never say anything bad about yourself. Lots of others will do that for you. <laughs> you don't need help. <laughs> you don't need to be doing it to yourself. There's others that will take care of that for you. Well, and you had actually told me, you said, I got you to write them down, and I'm glad I did because I normally tell people to say them out loud, and I sure wouldn't have wanted you to say these things out loud. <laughs> I'd have been in a real mess. That is a way of dealing with those thoughts, folks, so you understand. When that thing is telling you something, Say it out loud. Just say it out loud. And you'll see how stupid it sounds. So, Gary, it may not sound stupid when it's in your head. No, because you're listening to it. But when you say it out loud, it's stupid. So if you verbalize it and you say, I'm going to fail, I'm not worthy, uh, nothing good's going to happen to me, and if you verbalize it and it comes out of your mouth, you're going to sit back and go, wait a minute. That's that's not right. And if saying it out loud doesn't stop it, write it down and look at how stupid, how foolish it is. Because your point is, we would never allow anyone to say those things to us. No, we it, would we're get, saying it to ourselves. We would get fighting mad if anybody called us up and said, hey, I just wanted to say the following things to you. <laughs> You're never going to make it. Uh, you're going to fail. You're going to go broke. You're not worthy. The people in your office don't like you. You're not special. Nobody loves you. If we said, uh, had anybody say those things to us, we'd hang up the phone and say, that dude has lost his mind. But yet we say those things. Yeah. My friends, do any of you say it to yourselves? That you're not worthy? That you're not smart? that you're not creative, 
that you have no real purpose in this world other than for, to be there for them to abuse. Hmm. You say all that stuff for yourself? Well, next time you start saying it to yourself, my friends, do something simple. Say it out loud or write it down. Now, you have an inner voice. Let me talk to you about this. There's no question about it. You have, an, actually, you have two inner voices. You have the one that's going to put you down, that's negative, that's saying all of these bad things to you to get you to fall into. I'm not sure what we would call that voice. <laughs> I read a book not long ago where they said, that's the devil. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. It might as well be because there's nothing good from it. Then you have another inner voice that's a little deeper than that, which I am comfortable with the fact that that is the universe infinite intelligence that you all have inside of you. And it's a little old inner voice that is going to tell you positive things, that's going to give you warnings, it's going to give, you may call it intuition, you may call it hunches, mm. but in the, in the end, that little inner voice is going to take care of you and protect you. And I've heard people say, well, that's God that's inside of each and every one of you. But what do they say, that the temple, that the body is the temple for mm. God, your body? Well, it makes perfectly, makes perfectly good sense. All the good things being said to you would be, all the bad things would, would be the other end. So I can see that. Yeah, it, uh, so it's a wonderful world, my friends, if you will listen to the good inner voice instead of the bad one. And oh, by the way, say what the good inner voice says you out loud and then write that down. Yeah. Because that's what's going to be. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking, what would our friends give? Because I'm sitting here thinking of myself. What would I give to be able to get in the car by myself, drive for an hour, hour and a half, and every one of my thoughts be positive, like you had the experience on the way in today? I mean, that's what we're talking about. Now, if anyone out there has ever done that, and you've been alone for an hour and a half in the car and everything that came through your mind was positive, yeah, let us know. You can contact Gary at GaryCJohnson.com. I think mine were positive simply because after reading all of these books over a period of time, I started shutting down and stopped thinking when something negative started. I did it in, and it, evidently it's now instinct. So. You are now programming your brain as in saying, we've got this work to do, we've got this work to do, I've got this problem to solve, I've got this, and your brain is too busy working on productive things to have time to let those thoughts come in? And if you put your brain there, it is amazing what it will do. Every single one of the great artists and inventors and Einstein and all of them will tell you, and it's written, it came to them in their inner voice when they weren't thinking <gasps> mm -hmm. what they needed to do. That's that inner voice I'm talking to you about. Get in tune with it. Get in tune with that good inner voice, that one that's going to make you happy, that one that's going to take care of you, that one that, believe it or not, is going to solve your problems. Gary, so the way you're doing your brain right now by giving it work to do, I'm thinking back to Dale Carnegie. You remember the lady who was worried to death about her son who was in the army? She was so afraid that he was going to get killed. She couldn't eat. She couldn't sleep. She went to the doctor and she said, I'm not going to be able to survive this. And his order to her was to get a job. Yeah. She got one job, and then she got another job after that, a part-time job. She was working two jobs a day. She ate, she slept, and she stopped worrying because she kept herself busy. She didn't have time to worry. <laughs> Which is what you can do with the brain. Yeah. The brain, <laughs> one of these quotes was beautiful. That i got to share it with you. 
It said, what a shame that we have this wonderful brain that's stuck in this pitiful body. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, the, the computer is unbelievable, but the little... What a, in other words, it, was, it said, what a joke. Yeah, I played on us. the little housing and the casing that the brain is in it could use some work. I, I get that. that. The body itself, yeah. you know, they're yeah. stuck with it. Uh, so overall, my friends, are we all doing okay? Yeah. We're getting it, aren't you? Hmm? You're getting how important you are. You know, I tried to think um, the other day when we had the horrific uh, flooding that took place in eastern Kentucky and, and the loss of lives, and uh, I kept saying, what will come out of this that can be good because it, it was so bad? And then you started seeing stories of neighbors rescuing neighbors. You started seeing stories of people coming in and bringing supplies and helping people in need. And it was one good story after another of people rising to the occasion and being neighbors. One lady was <clears throat> telling me that she went to volunteer to do something. She said there was a line. Of volunteers. Of volunteers yeah. wanting to respond. That's what our community in Eastern Kentucky is made of. And we'll be closer and stronger because of it. And we're there for each other. Um, one of the first things that Anita, my wife, said to me when it happened, she said, Gary, I'm going to get on here and I'm going to try to find out what we can do which that's been the response, that's, hasn't it? What can I do? Uh, yeah. And uh, in my office, the people in my office, um, Angie Owens, she called me. She says, I'm cooking all the food in my house, and I'm taking it up to the church right now. Mm -hmm. I said, Angie, don't bother to come to work if you're going to be helping those people. Just and let's just help. Let's and you know what we can. Gary, the, the great thing of the response is which what you've been talking about, people being unique and special. I've not heard one single thing about religion, about political, about family names, about regions, about uh, this county or that county. It has been an overwhelming response of just people saying people need help. And we're going to reach out and we're going to do everything that we can. No stipulations. It was just simply, let's go do what we can do. Right. Which is good. And that's the humanity that you've talked about. I want to talk to you a little bit about the ingenuity of Eastern Kentucky, okay? Not accustomed to big words, right? Over this time. So how did they deal with certain things? Mm. Certain big words. Okay. They come up with their own way for it. Team spirit. The way we did deal, deal with it in Eastern Kentucky is one for all and all for one. <laughs> <laughs> originality. We don't say originality. We say we going to make it from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Irrelevant. What's that got to do with the price of cheese, eggs in China? <laughs> We're saying the same thing. We're just saying it in a different way. Say, familiarity. I know what it's, it's just like the back of my head. Mm -hmm. Jealousy. Why is youth, wa youth wasted on the young? <laughs> Undecided. Ah, the jury's still out. <laughs> Futility. You're arguing a moot point. Regret. If I'd known I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. Boy, how many times have we said that? I'm reading it from this book, How's a Cat's Back, uh, by Kedrick Sanders and Lois the Snake's Belly. And it's, there's probably a thousand sayings from eastern Kentucky, southern West Virginia, those places in here. And when I went through the book, I recognized every one of them. I'd heard them at one point in my life. All your life. You know, like, run like the wind. He's like a fish out of water. He drinks like a fish. She's just like a mother hen. <laughs> you know, there's, it's, it's books full of those old things. Slow as a snail, quick as a cat, sharp as a tack. 
busy as a bird dog in mating season, hairy as an ape, pretty as a speckled pup, smooth as silk. And we grew up with that. We grew up with those things. That all, wasn't a, all of her life. He runs like a singer sewing machine. <laughs> remember those old singer sewing machines? Oh, do I? With the pedal? I, you, you know the, you remember the pedal where you had to you yeah. pedal the mas machine to get it going? We're going to beat them like beating a drum. <laughs> it's, it's, they're dumb enough to think an airplane needs mud flips. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just these sayings. That I, I wanted to put a little humor into this uh, by reading you some of those, say, those words that they were talking about. Confrontation. Big word, right? Big word. How did we deal with it? I got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> uh, so where, where in the world did we come up with that? I've got a bone to pick with you. I don't know. Revenge. I'm going to even the score. Prudence. I'm not going to get my dog in that fight. <laughs> I've got no dog in that fight. I think everybody around the world has said that. A slur, that's hitting below the belt. Uh, it's it's an interesting. Uh, working hard, he's burning a candle at both ends. <laughs> I mean, just, we all have that's our- That's that book. We all have our culture. So did we have a little life, as a few of those, my friends? Now, here's another book that I goofed around with some this weekend as I was telling Anita, I was trying to see if everybody was crazy or they were really on to something. This is The Most Brilliant Thoughts of All Time by John M. Shanahan. And it's full of brilliant quotes, uh, thoughts, not his, but other people's. Which is that, probably the best way to learn when you hear an old saying. Well, And what have you always told me? An old saying becomes an old saying because it's true. They wrote these down and saved them throughout history because they had a meaning that's deeper than what they're saying. You know, like uh, this one, we are inclined to believe those whom we do not know because they have never deceived us. I read that one earlier. Now, isn't that the truth? Hmm? I mean, well, a lot of us would say anybody that's out of town is an expert, right? So anybody that doesn't live in the town that we live in, mm -hmm. well, they got to be an expert. They're going to know more. Like this one. Fortune and money does not change a man. It just takes his mask off. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows who the person really is, right? Yeah. I'm going to read you a few more of these. I got a, this stuff I think is fascinating. We used to say that same thing when someone would get a job title. Okay, now Keith, you got to keep this one in mind. Okay. No one gossips about other people's virtues. Absolutely the truth. Think about that. Now, that's worth saying again. No one gossips about other people's secret virtues. Okay, so you get a promotion at work. You get a raise. How many people get on the phone and they call around to tell everybody? Eh, nobody. You get fired, you lose your job, and everybody is like, did you hear what happened to old so-and-so? <laughs> Got the ax. Ben Franklin said that three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. <laughs> Which is still true today, 200 plus years later. And then he goes on to say, you can take a whole lot better care of your secret than somebody else can. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> so, so when you're telling that person, I'm only going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Now, what was your famous thing that you used to say? Someone would come up to you and say, Gary, I'm only going to tell you this, nobody else. And you'd go, don't tell me. That's right. <laughs> because when they told those other people, I get accused of telling them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you know it's going to be told. But well, if he tell me, I wasn't that special. Nah. If you tell somebody else. And they're going to tell it, and then he's going to say that it was you that told it. it, it was, right. A good lesson. So remember that lesson, folks. If somebody comes up and says, you're the only one I'm going to tell this, look them in the eye and say, please don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know. Because they're giving you a burden you'll never. <laughs> it will get out, and you will be the person and who told it. you will be the one that told it. Usually... We praise somebody only to be praised. 
<laughs> yeah, what was the, what was the old test if someone pulls out their uh, wallet and shows a picture of your kid that watch the other hand go to their wallet because they have to show it too? Yeah. You, you can't help but do it. Here's a good one. Nobody will keep the thing he hears to himself, and nobody will repeat just what he hears and no more. Third toe gossip. Oh, Lord. That's the good stuff. What was the old test, Gary, where you had uh, 10 people around the table, and the first person would lean over and whisper to the second person, and then they would do that, and when it got around to the end of the table, the 10th person had to say what was said, and it was nothing like what the first person said. Now, this may be the last one I read for you folks, and I mentioned it a while ago. Never speak ill of yourself. Your friends will always say enough on their own. Goes right back to the start of the program, what mm -hmm. we started out about. Why yeah. would you give your own dog a bad name? <laughs> oh, i got to read this one. I can't. Brains are an asset if you hide them. <laughs> Uh, this, this book is a good book. Uh, and it's a good way to learn. Yeah. Every one of these sayings has a, a reason for it. <clears throat> Every one of those sayings uh, came about probably because of a lesson in life that someone went through. Yeah. I, I'm sure of that. All right. Well, let's, let's uh, go back to the beginning of this program. We talked real quickly about Dale Carnegie. You want a good dog, give the dog a good name. You want a good friend, you want a good spouse, you want a good child, you want a good co-worker. It applies to us. One other thing, my friends. Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, a legend, took the Dale Carnegie course when he, forgot, when he first started. I read that yesterday. That should tell you all you need to know. That's right. That should tell you everything you need to know about the Dale Carnegie situation and whether or not you should listen to what that man has to say. Which is what we're talking about, being happy and successful. And as Gary said, you can't be successful if you're not happy. So if you would, please invite someone else to tune in along with you as we go on this journey of reading our books and trying to find happiness. And if you'd like to leave a message for Gary, you can do that. Gary at GaryCJohnson.com. My friend, good to see you. Good to be seen. We look forward to seeing you again next week, right here at this same time. Thank you for listening to Simply the Law of Life, a program created by attorney Gary C. Johnson. Until next week, may you be safe, blessed, and happy. If you're hurt, injured, don't waste time. Gary Johnson cries for every dime. I'm Gary C. Johnson. You've seen these billboards and ads that say size matters. I agree. The size that matters is the size of the results the law firm gets for their clients. We have several multi-million dollar verdicts here in Kentucky. In fact, our firm owns the record for the single largest personal injury verdict in the state of Kentucky. That's the size that matters to you. In Kentucky, give our firm the call.